No, but my heart. She's your heart. Oh, no, no, no. Yes, but. Sends us on there, She's a trumpeter. Very brave. Very brave. That's enough to make my heart go there we go, you see. Hey, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Don't make it go. Don't look at them. Don't look at the breathing okay. pace, sir. Shall I make it go from there? Oh. No, what we're going to do is just see what the heart rhythm is like uh, before you start doing some controlled breathing. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and and do the controlled breathing for some time as well. Same thing. Yeah. Is it? No. The bottom one's a pulse. Yeah, and now the yeah. bottom one is, yeah, the bottom one is the pulse. Now we've got um, here, once again, uh, this is the, the speeding up and the slowing down. This is the timeline, okay? So what should we Collect. Collect. Yeah. So, what do I call it? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so this is like, you know, fairly, this red, blue and green here, Okay, that is a score mechanism. So while um, Colette or anybody else is in the red, that means that the heart is beating erratically. Okay. Uh, now, to explain the difference between erratic and rhythmic, um, drag a tin can along with a piece of string. You don't know how high it's going to bounce, you don't know how hard it's going to fall, you don't know when, you know, the timing, it's all completely erratic. A musical beat, you know what's coming next, you know, it's like rhythmic. So that's, that's the difference, okay? Now, <coughs> here um, is, is the red, which is normal, because as I said before, most people's hearts beat very erratically, okay? And it's shown with this line here, it just sort of, there's no rhythm there, there's no real structure. But now, if I can ask Colette to uh, follow this breathing pacer here. So breathe out slowly. And just relax, and then breathe in slowly. But don't over-breathe, just follow that in and out slowly. So what's happening now, as you can see, uh, where the line was erratic and there's no structure to it, uh, and, there's, and she's in the red, now she's gone over into the, into the green, <coughs> and her heart's beating much more rhythmically uh, and coherently. Yeah. Okay? Now, when, when her heart's beating like that, um, it's beating more efficiently um, and more effectively. Okay? I mean, you really could sort of like um, compare this to going to the garage with your car, mm. you know, and it's like, okay, it hasn't been tuned in ages, and it's like running a bit rough. You know, your, um, your points are out, your car needs adjusting, and uh, all the rest of that. So this is like going to um, the doctor or the mechanic and getting your engine tuned up. This is your engine, and <coughs> by breathing in synchronization with it, you're actually making, you're actually tuning the heart. So you're making it um, fire at top dead center and you know, you're sort of like just making it work more efficiently and effectively. Um, so now Colette is in the green, she heart's beating much more coherently and um, that's, that's, that's what I like to see. You know, um, it, it, what I'm demonstrating here is the influence that your breathing has over your heart rhythm. This okay. is what effectively so happens when you're meditating. You're calming your whole body down, so you're calming your heart yeah. rhythm down. So you're breathing with me, that's the whole point. Yeah. So if you're an athlete and you're wanting to calm down after exercise, you breathe rhythmically to calm that heart back down. Absolutely. So 
so has it got to be this type of breathing? Or if you will say, because oh, when I run for a bus, <laughs> you, but it, is that good for the heart, though? I always think it must be a bit good to run. I mean, to uh, get, a, get a heart pumping in a different way than normally. Mm -hmm. Well, um, breathless, isn't, is that not good for if, you're, if you're not very fit anyway, if anybody's not very fit, mm -hmm. you know, to, to have to run for the bus um, and put your heart under strain like that, you know, isn't necessarily a good idea. Um, I mean, if, you, if, you've got heart, if you've got any heart issue, issues that are hidden or anything no, like that, no. that are hidden... But I'm not fit. Well, um... I'm getting there, but I'm I mean, just wondering if there's another way of doing it. There well. is another way of doing it. No. Yeah, but that's what I teach. Oh, um, <clears throat> now, this is for demonstration purposes. Mm -hmm. But what I've done, and, and this software um, costs over £100. And it's about £150 for this. I think more like 180 actually now. But I've been working with this for um, about three years now. And what I've managed to do is find a way to bypass using the computer bypass all of this software and <coughs> use your um, use your pulse reading as the as the feedback. So this is biofeedback, you're you're looking at the computer screen, you're saying, okay, right, following the breathing pacer, you're using that feedback to sort of control the way your body works. What I've done is saying, right, you don't need any of that. All you actually need now is one of these, okay? Now this is a pulse oximeter. Now what it does, it beeps when your heart beats, okay? So this is Amy's action, I'm just borrowing your Mine's pink. beeper, Amy. <laughs> okay. So what it does, see that? So what, what I teach people to do now is you can breathe in sequence to the heart to the beat. And you break your breathing up into increments, time to the beat. And what I've been able to do by doing that is create maximum <coughs> heart coherence. And so um, Colette doesn't need the equipment, doesn't need to look at that. She can have that on her finger. She can breathe in time with the beat and she can reach maximum heart coherence. So, Thank you, Colette. That was, um, I thought I'd keep it going while we were talking. Yeah, well, very, good. very good. Better than me. <laughs> it's very good. It's very smooth. It's very smooth. Yeah. Yeah. I got my breath just there. <laughs>